In this week's video, I show how I transform a shot like this into a much more polished shot like this in some quick, easy steps using Lightroom on the iPad. So this is the shot that I'm working on today. It's a photo of an amazing guy called Cameron, who is the whiskey expert at the Balmoral Hotel in Edinburgh. This is a shot that I took for a big upcoming feature on CNET. So this is a professional photo. This was a professional photo shoot, and I'm doing some of my production of these shots in Lightroom on the iPad. Don't think that just because it's an iPad, that means that it's only for beginners or for basic work. You can really do a lot of stuff using Lightroom on the iPad. I'm going to show you... Uh, a very sort of quick run through of some of the things that I would use in order to edit my photos. So I'm going to keep things very, very quick this time. And I'm going to start off just by applying a preset. Don't be afraid of using presets. It doesn't mean it's cheating. It's not one click and then done. They're a great way of starting off, getting some inspiration for different, um, uh, different ideas of color grading, different looks that you might want to go with. Um, every single one has a different tone. Um, and you can get some really, really nice looks overall. I really like the blue of this A5 raw here, but I'm gonna add a little bit of blue grading later. And the one that I've had a look at already is A6 raw. It's one of my favorites. I love what it does to the colors and the contrast. It gives a little bit of that sort of filmic fade. It immediately starts to look more cinematic. If we look at the before and the after, it's great, but we're gonna go a lot further with this. I'm going to go into our color and I'm just going to cool it down a little bit and I'm gonna increase the tint because it's a little bit too much in the greens. And so already we've got a much nicer looking shot. I can tell I'm already pretty tired because before I started this screen recording, I cleaned my iPad screen uh, so that you couldn't see how dirty it was, failing to understand how screen recordings work. Anyway, let's dive into our light. There's not a lot I want to do. I'm going to bring it up a little bit on the exposure. I might now leave those highlights where they are, but I am going to drop down the shadows. Now, I know what you might be thinking. It's got a lot of shadow detail in it already. Maybe I want to lift that to bring it out, but I don't. If you do that, it kills that mood. It kills some of that drama that I've achieved in my lighting. So actually, I want to bring it down. and I want to keep it really moody. Keep that contrast. Keep those shadow details in. I love the way the shadows fall over his face. This um, already is much better, minus 100 on those shadows. Most of the changes I'm gonna be making to this shot, it's gonna be using selective edits, using tools like the radial filter or the brush or the linear filter. Um, I'm gonna start off with a radial. It's gonna let me draw a circle and it's going right over Cameron's face like this, just like that. And I'm just gonna use that to slightly brighten it. And look already, just with that one tool, it's like I've increased the intensity of the flash that I was using off camera. It's great. You don't need much, just a little hint, something around, mm, something around there. What I do is I always sort of pulse the tool like this, and that's a really good way of seeing exactly how much it's affecting your shot. I just think plus 20 is all it needs. It's a little bit. So the, uh, I'm going to put in a couple more radial filters because no, I'm noticing in this background here, all these bottles, they are certainly there, but they're a little bit hidden in shadow. And I do want to keep some, uh, some of the, the nice visuals in that background, all these different whiskey bottles. So I'm going to up that exposure quite a bit. I'm going to increase the whites and increase the highlights, but they're still not really popping out all that much. They're still a little bit hazy in the background. So I'm also gonna increase the clarity. And as I do, look, suddenly you can see that wood grain in the uh, in the cabinet behind it. The colors of that whiskey really start to pop out more. I don't wanna to go too far, a little bit there. And in fact, I'm just gonna bring back down that exposure ever so slightly. But already, I think that's a really, really nice touch. I'm gonna to do another one on this bottle of Macallan up here. Same thing, a slight touch on exposure, a slight touch on clarity. And I'm gonna zoom right in. I'm gonna do another one right on this glass. Something like this. I'm gonna go up on that exposure quite a bit because I really want that to pop out a lot more than it is doing. Up those whites. We can stand to go quite far here. And again, with that clarity. And suddenly, if we just look up before and after, before and after, it pops off the screen so much more. So this is where we've got to now. We've already started to craft and sculpt our light. It looks really, really great. A Couple more of these, you see, this is about building up the light. 
building up what exactly where you want, uh, what, what you want to be visible in your image. And another one up here. Again, you don't want to go too far with this. Just adding some little bits. But that clarity is so important. Look just how the, the details on those bottles just start to just pop out even more. But if you use loads of clarity on the whole image, which I can even show you, everything goes very crunchy. I really, I don't like how it looks when you add in a lot of clarity to the whole thing. I may end up adding like a plus five, just a little pop at the end, but you can see if I went as far as I did with the bottles, it goes very weird, very contrasty, very crunchy, and I don't like that at all. So that's why I don't do it to the whole image. Instead, using those uh, those tools um, is the way to go. And I'm going to do a little bit more, but I'm going to focus it on Cameron's beard. And I'm going to paint it in around here. Turn his beard from a, a lovely copper into bright letterbox red. Don't worry, it's not going to stay. And here is where we can apply the clarity, because look, so again, all those details, all those the, the, those beard hairs really start to pop out. It looks so cool. Maybe dip those shadows, maybe even up the contrast a little bit. That's just really making it stand out, sculpting it. So again, before and after, that looks great. I'm going to bring in a linear filter. I'm going to bring that up here. I'm going to really drop that down because there's a lot of sort of brightness. If we just look down here. There's a lot of brightness in these glasses and also there's quite a lot of brightness in the bottom of uh, of Cameron's waistcoat and I don't really want it to be that, that visible. I want the light to be sort of coming in as a beam from the right. And so just by dropping that bright right down actually as it's turned out and maybe doing the same with the shadows, we've really kind of sculpted it in. Look how much of a difference that makes. I might just add another one on the top but less powerful this time just like that so we've still got that radial filter but it's just bringing out some of the details on the bottle but it's not quite so bright and distracting your eye is very much drawn to the middle of the picture to Cameron himself which is exactly what we want um, I'm just going to zoom in again and I'm going to bring a brush tool much smaller brush and this one is going to be upping the exposure and I'm just going to use this you know what, undo, what I need to do is reduce my flow. That means that every time I paint, there's going to be less of it painted in. So if I increase an exposure and do that again now, I have to go over and over the area in order to get the same effect. And that's great because that allows you to really build up a more natural looking, um, just a more natural look to your light. So we're just emphasizing some of those highlights, some of the way that they've, they're falling into the shot. And again, a little bit more on camera and a little bit in his eyes. So of course you want the eyes to pop out. A little bit on here. Touch more on that bottle. It's a very, very small amount. You may not even be able to tell where this is going, but if we just pump that up and down, oh wait, I've just clicked onto the wrong one, I'm sorry. There we go. If we pump that up and down, you can see exactly where they are and what it, and what it's doing. It just helps give some dimension. Look at that tie in particular. Look at the way that without it, it looks a little bit flat and lifeless, but with it, suddenly it's got shape, it's got form, It's that colour really pops off. It works really nicely. So yeah, somewhere around a whole extra stop of exposure, I think works really, really well. So there's our before. There's our after. Always check to make sure that you're happy with where things are going. And I really am. I think this looks great. I'm really pleased. Hasn't taken us too long so far. Let's go into our colors this time and into color mix. Now, I want to grab the green hue just in case there are any lingering greens. I'm not even sure if there are, but I'm going to bring that down. In our yellows, I'm going to bring that down a little bit because at the moment the yellows are a bit of a sort of a sickly green, particularly on some of the whiskey labels. Instead, I want to bring it down into a much more um, orangey yellow, which is uh, much more accurate. The colors in the tie um, are much more accurate to what they should be. What about if I give it a little bit of luminance too? Yeah, let's do that. That again helps pop out that tie, adds to that sculpting we were doing. Not too far, plus 50. Um, now the oranges I want to be careful with because 
most of the colors in this scene are orange. Um, uh, the, most of Cameron's clothes, most of the whiskey, all of the wood. So if you go too far, as you can see, everything goes a hot pink. It's very, very weird. But I just want to take it into a deeper orange. Minus eight, I think, is all it needs. And again, we've got some really, really nice effects there. I'm not sure if there are any magentas, but I don't really want magentas in this. I'm just going to grab that and slide it into the blues. I feel like there may have been some sort of back here on the, on these um, on these back panels. Okay, so I think the last thing that I actually really want to do is go down, uh, close our color mix, open our color grading, and I just want to add a little pop of blue into those shadows. Not much, ten on the saturation, and maybe about the same again in warmth in the highlights it's a really really small amount but i do think it makes a real nice difference it just gives this sort of cinematic edge to our shot that i think it we were missing before it is subtle but i think it works really really well and that i think is everything that i want to do to this image if we just have a look again full screen this time on our before it's a nice shot i've lit it i think accurately with a um uh, with a big off-camera light source to the right of the camera. Um, but our tones aren't great. The white balance certainly needs some shifting. And it's a little bit flat. It's a little bit lifeless. And now, by using those tools that we've we've been able to selectively put light exactly where we want, we've built up those tones. We've really added that pop to that whiskey glass. You know, it's very obvious when you look at it before and after. But when you just see the shot like this, it really, really stands out. It maybe looks like I've added an extra an, an extra light just for that glass. Um, we've got beautiful cinematic tones, and it's all been done in Lightroom on the iPad. I haven't even taken this over into Photoshop. It's dead simple. Using these tools, um, you can really do a lot of um, a lot of really great stuff with your images. So if you haven't played around with selective edits um, for your portraiture or for your landscape as well, I use these tools a lot in landscape work. Um, then do make sure you play around because it is a much more powerful way of working than solely relying on your global edits like your exposures and contrast. Um, if you have found this video helpful, do please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.